Well, hello, WD0AKX Larry here, and today I'm going to show you a loop antenna that I designed, well, kind of copied the design, um, for my Magnum 1012 handheld radio here that I have. Works on 10 and 12 meters, and uh, I have a super long duck antenna that works fairly well for it, but I want to get even better. And I made this uh, loop antenna here that covers everything between 20 and 30 megahertz. So it'll cover 15 meters, 12 meters, 10 meters, even 11 meters. But uh, I probably won't be using it on 15. But uh, it's made for QRP use, basically for this handheld radio I have. I made it out of commonly available parts, PVC tubing, and I have this soft copper tube here. That's the only thing I had to purchase. I, I made, uh, well, everything else is made out of commonly available parts that I had around the shop here. And I had to uh, purchase a tubing, and it cost me $10 at the local hardware store for a 10 foot section. And I cut six foot off. This is a six foot section right here. And this is the, the tubing I used what it is bought it in a box like this it's it's called a uh, utility grade coil three three eighths inch outer diameter by 10 feet made by homeworks worldwide i had that at the local hardware and it's very pliable you can uh, bend this stuff very easily so i just cut a six foot section and my coupling coil, uh, this is kind of a transformer, so on the coupling I used one-fifth the dimension of this, so one-fifth of six feet, and uh, this is the tubing also, but I flattened it out with a hammer, so it's kind of a flat section here, as you can maybe see, and uh, basically you can hold it up in the air, and it is directional. This is a tuning capacitor, and I happen to have some of those on hand here. This is a 50 picofarad tuning capacitor, variable tuning capacitor. So uh, many of you might have those in your shack or in your uh, junk box here. If not, uh, they are available. Do a little searching on the internet for variable capacitors. Now, this is probably the main um, the main thing for power handling capability, I guess. Uh, the better built your capacitor is, the more power you can put into this antenna. But you do have to keep your losses at a minimum, and that's why I went with this larger diameter copper tubing. And I'll give you some close-up views here. I did. I soldered all my connections here to the capacitor with some heavy gauge wire. I got a choke here I put on the cable. I don't know if that'll do much or not, but I uh, figured it couldn't hurt. And uh, so basically I'm feeding this smaller loop here. This acts as a transformer. So I'm feeding this smaller loop and it is coupling to the larger loop. And the capacitor is across the larger loop so I can tune it. Now I went uh, ahead and put this uh, extra coupling on to tune by hand. It's a plastic tuning stick that I had in the shack that happened to fit on the shaft of the tuning capacitor. It's kind of like a, a straw. You could also use some rubber tubing, uh, like gas line or something, rubber or plastic tubing uh, to slip on there. But you, you can't really tune the capacitor by hand. Getting your hand close to the capacitor detunes the circuit. So you have to kind of be away from that. So that's why I added this extension here. So um, it'll tune very easily, like I say, on the, the frequencies I described, anything between 20 and 30 megahertz. And I added a power meter here. I'll show you what I did there uh, coming up. Okay, this is the Magnum 1012 radio that I kind of designed the loop to be used with. This is a 10 and 12 meter radio. Uh, it'll do single sideband AM and FM modes. And this is a stock antenna that it, it came with. It's pretty short for, for 10 meters and 12. So, I also purchased this additional longer duck antenna called the LRD1012, and that does work fairly well. I've made uh, several contacts now across the states here so far with this radio running 3 watts PEP, 
talk to uh, Florida, California, um, Idaho, Washington, and uh, I don't know where else, uh, but I've worked several stations on this duck. But now, I want to improve my signal even more. In the summertime, uh, kind of cold to use this outside in the winter, but I can also use this in, in the house here, in the living room. I'm going to do some experiments with that. Uh, it does receive quite well in the living room, and I did make one contact uh, the other day to California in the house here with this loop. But this loop should uh, be even more efficient than this long duck antenna is. Uh, loops are very efficient, actually, uh, for their size. Uh, they, they're a high Q tuned circuit, so uh, you have to retune them every time you change frequency, pretty much. Uh, they're uh, very narrow on where they're resonant at, and uh, that's the purpose of this tuning capacitor here. But the size of the loop is not really all that critical. Usually it's a fraction of the, of the wavelength for the frequency you're going to use it on, but uh, this one here is uh, about six feet in circumference, maybe a little less, somewhere between five and six. Uh, I don't remember exactly where I cut it. The main thing is where you feed the loop on this uh, smaller loop here. That's where you hook the coax up. It goes to your radio. And this loop, it's like a transformer, so uh, it couples to the larger loop. And the larger loop is tuned with the capacitor. But th the smaller loop here, you want to cut for one-fifth the size of whatever you make this larger diameter loop. I didn't want to make my loop uh, too bulky for carrying around and yet I wanted to have it big enough to where it would still be uh, somewhat uh, a good radiator for the frequencies I wanted to use. So for 10 and uh, 12 meters basically uh, just from experience over the years I picked this size basically like I say about five or six between five and six feet in circumference and this being one-fifth that size so it makes it uh, very easy to carry around I did use uh, half inch outer diameter PVC and I had that on hand here and I didn't even have to cut it I had the right sections just uh, fit right into place and the couplers here I'll just uh, give you some basic dimensions of mine here basically across measures around 19 or 20 inches and it's not perfectly circular. It's nothing, uh, nothing real pretty, but it works. And uh, the size of this loop is about four inches across, approximately. I told you uh, at the beginning of the video that uh, this extension I have to ex to get my hand away from this capacitor when I'm tuning it was a TV tuning tool. Um, but uh, I'm not sure now, thinking back, it seems like this may be a, an actual extender for a potentiometer shaft and some older TVs and that. But I'm just not sure on this one. I do have a whole bunch of tuning tools, but this is one I have never had to use. I have a few of these, so that worked out good for my extension. You just want something non-conductive to get your hand away from this variable capacitor so you can tune it without uh, being part of the circuit and interfering with the tuning. Okay, let's get a few close-up shots here. This is the top of the loop, and this is the primary coil uh, of the transformer. This is where you connect your coax. Uh, this loop is split in the middle here, so it's not connected all the way across here. I cut a couple slits in the PVC just to hold that in and put some hot glue over that, but the the cable connection comes up and the braid side goes to one side and the hot center lead goes to the other side. So this might appear as a direct short. Uh, at DC it actually is and for most of your RF frequencies but when you tune the system to the frequency that you want when you get to resonance then it is not a short. So then uh, then the signal couples from the primary to the secondary part of the loop and it radiates the signal. Kind of how that works I guess. I fed my cable down inside the tube and it comes out down here at the bottom. 
But another thing I have is this relative power output meter and that comes in very handy for tuning the loop. I'll show you that in a second what I did there. This is the variable capacitor here. It's an open air type which is what you need and the larger the capacitor as far as physically and the more the plates are separated in that better quality the capacitor the more power you can put into this antenna with your transmitter. I kept losses very low. I soldered all my connections here. And this bottom of the loop here is also cut in the middle and that's where the capacitor is hooked up across the loop. I'll show you a diagram on paper of this in a little bit. This is a 50 picofarad variable capacitor. And I just tune it like that and watch the meter for maximum output. I'll show you that in a little bit. The meter is just a generic uh, meter from a CB base station. Um, I've got several meters in one of my parts boxes and this just happened to work out just right. It, it's not physically connected here to the loop in any way. It just happens to fit right down into this uh, PVC coupling tube. And to make the meter show RF, what I did was uh, just put a germanium diode on the back there between the two terminals of the meter and left just a little bit of lead length. You can probably see short leads on the diode, just enough to pick up signal uh, like a field strength meter does. And just by being close to the RF field, the meter will indicate relative power output. It's not calibrated, but it gives me a real good indication, makes tuning easy. I just tune, transmit, uh, and uh, tune for maximum in indication there. Once I'm close on frequency, the way to tune a loop, first of all, is to listen to your received noise, the background audio noise, and then tune the capacitor for maximum audio on your receiver. It's very sharp, so you gotta find the sharp the point there and get as close as you can. Once I do that, then I can tune for maximum power. Okay, I'll give you an example of that. I have the receiver on and the speaker up near the mic here so it'll pick up the background noise. Now watch as I tune this across the frequency. Hear that peak in audio. You can hear it's very sharp. But it should be very close to being in tune right there. So from that point now I will watch the RF output meter. Okay, keying the transmitter. You can see the meter. I'm close. You can see the maximum point now as I vary that capacitor slightly. So looks like right about there I'm in tune on frequency. And you can see how sharp it is. Also, the sound you could hear in there as I was tuning, the camera was picking up RF. RF was getting into the camera since I'm so close with it to the antenna. So when the signal maxed out, you heard, heard some uh, strange noises there probably in the audio here. That's what that was. This is a basic diagram of the magnetic loop antenna. Basically, this is your loop. It is, it's a tuned circuit. So when it is in tune, it will radiate RF that is applied through the primary loop. This is that smaller loop I was showing you. Uh, so your power coming from your transmitter will enter this coil and be coupled over to the tune circuit. And when in tune, it will radiate the energy, RF. So once again, this is my larger loop. And it is open at one point with a variable capacitor inserted. Nothing else connected to the larger part of the loop. Your coax is connected to this smaller primary loop. One side goes to the inner conductor of the cable and the other side to the shield and the coax to the radio. Now there's nothing real critical on the loop so feel free to experiment. Uh, 
just uh, pick a size that's suitable to you and make the uh, primary loop one-fifth the size of the larger loop and play around with different uh, variable capacitor sizes and uh, use an antenna analyzer see where you come out at there's also uh, uh, formulas and stuff if you do a little searching uh, around on the on the internet uh, look up magnetic loop antennas and you'll find plenty of information if you wanna try to calculate these out and everything I'm not uh, gonna cover all that here and all I'm just basically showing you the loop that I made Okay, this is not a scientific test or anything, but just for the heck of it, I thought I'd try. I have a homemade uh, field strength meter there. I don't know if you can see the meter. It's a large meter, but uh, I placed it at some distance back here, and I'm going to try to stand at the same distance with each different antenna I'm going to try here. This is the standard duck on the radio. comes with the radio. When I key the transmitter, you can see the meter just barely blips up off the scale at this distance. So let's go ahead and put the longer duck antenna on here. You can hear I'm picking up more noise right away with this longer duck, but uh, okay. Now you can see the meter come up about quarter scale there. And um, pretty much I think in the same spot here with the HT, but you can definitely see the meter move up a ways off scale. Okay, let's put the loop on here. Okay, and let's try the loop here. And the meter is showing uh, close to three-quarter scale here when I rotate the loop in the proper direction. And that's not really a very scientific test. This should be done outdoors and uh, distances measured and all that, but just kind of a rough indication here. There's a Brazil station coming in. Uh, PP5. Here's an example of a larger loop antenna that I built many years ago, used during the last sunspot cycle. And this is built for 20 and 40 meters. And I did uh, work a station in Germany, I remember, at one time with this hanging in my garage and I had a 12 watt PEP QRP 20 meter radio out in the garage and this was just hanging up in the attic and I was able to work Germany that was uh, I thought that was kind of amazing at the time but this is made of heavy gauge copper wire I think I'm gonna go ahead and replace that with the heavier copper tubing like in my newer antenna now and try that with this antenna to try to lower my losses there. One nice thing about the loop antenna is that it doesn't have to be mounted very high above ground level to work well. They work great for portable use or anywhere uh, that you have limited space for antennas. Maybe apartment dwellers, that type of thing. But uh, the loop is a very efficient antenna for its size and good for QRP portable use especially. So thanks for watching. Keep checking back on the page here because I'll be adding more videos as time goes on. For now, 7-3 from WD0AKX. One nice thing about the loop antenna is that they don't have to be mounted very high above ground level to work well. Um, the, let's try this again. One nice thing about so anyhow, that's my loop antenna, and uh, it's so anyhow, this is blah blah blah.